Rich, are you ready? All right, I will call to order the Town of Elon Town Council work session for July 25th, 2022. We will now go ahead with the Pledge of Allegiance. If all who are able will please stand. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, Colonel Clark, Diane. There are no items on the consent agenda, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So next on the agenda are public comments. This is the opportunity for um, residents and visitors to speak about any non-agenda item up to three minutes. Um, and if you would like to speak and share your wishes for the town, you would just need to sign in. Did anybody sign in, Diane, on the That person signed in, no one wishing to speak. Okay. Give it a moment in case anybody has changed their mind. <laughs> Anyone online? No. There are persons online, but not wishing to speak. Okay. We will close the public comment section. So next are ordinances and resolutions. Letter A, rezoning case 2022-02 for Park Northwest. I believe Lori, you are providing us with um, a presentation to start. If I can get the presentation. The second, we've been practicing this, so we should have it. Okay. Okay. Intro pages. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Thank you, Diane. Uh -huh. Mayor, members of the board, at the July 12th of council meeting, there were some great discussion items that were brought up between the board members and the applicant. And um, as staff, I just wanted to highlight a couple of those discussion points. Um, <clears throat> first, one of the items was the parking setback. Um, <coughs> The parking setback um, that was brought up, um, I did reach out to the developer and his team um, and his um, landscape architect, Tony, who's here this evening, did um, include an item in the email that I have included in your packet that stated that they would be willing to proffer a condition to the request that requires a minimum distance between the garage door and the right-of-way sidewalk for front entry homes and the garage door and the alley pavement to be a minimum of 18 feet in depth for rear loaded homes to allow for adequate parking. Um, and this would be in compliance with our LDO. Um, if this is something that the board would like to see, then this would be need to be a condition um, that is added into their request. <clears throat> Connectivity to Cable Square development to the north. Um, there has some big discussion about removing the street connection or the pavement connection to Cable Square via Ralston Drive and possibly only providing um, pedestrian connectivity and a utility connection. Um, Fire Chief Massey stated that he was comfortable closing the connection at Ralston Drive as long as the Old Town Drive remains open. Um, he discussed this also with the um, Fire Marshal John Payne with Alamance County and he was fine with that as well. Um, so again, if this is something the board wants to consider, there is a current condition in there that I believe the developer added 
um, about um, keeping both connections open with two speed pumps or tables. So that would be something that need to be modified if the board chose to um, apply that condition or consider that condition. Setbacks between residential buildings, um, as stated at the previous meeting, um, the developer revised the side yard setback for the larger lots, um, the lots that are larger than 50 feet in width, to go from a three foot side yard setback to five feet, which would provide 10 feet in between the dwellings. Um, Chief Massey, and I say Chief Massey, there was a memo included in your packet from him. Um, he went on to elaborate that the setbacks between the buildings change the building code to require fire rated walls facing one another. Um, and this would be in the remaining single family that has a three foot side yard setback. Um, the developer has stated that they plan on using brick, stone and fiber cement board, which helps to reduce the fire spread. Um, and also just to keep in mind that all North Carolina building code and fire code requirements must be met in order for them to um, obtain building permits for those lots. Um, there was, I think, very minimal discussion, but there was some discussion about the sidewalk um, and the crosswalk. The developer has proposed a five-foot sidewalk along the western edge of North Williamson Avenue um, with also a mid-block crossing. That sidewalk is not a requirement of the LDO, but rather the something that the developer is offering to do. Um, I believe it's listed in number condition number 13. Um, there is existing language. I don't know if the board is comfortable with the existing language under number 13. We'd like to see it modified. Civic space. The developer has requested a waiver of the required 2 to 15% civic space. Um, I think I spoke with the landscape architect today, again, Tony, um, and I think that their hopes is that they might be able to count some of that urban open space um, at, in order to meet their civic space requirement. And lastly, street width and on-street parking. Um, this was brought up extensively in the TRC meeting, um, also at previous meetings here. Um, and as indicated on the plans, there shall be no on-street parking on the narrow streets in the development. Um, and the developer did agree, um, I believe at the last meeting, um, to increase the pavement width of the alleys to 16 feet. Again, if that's a condition that the board would like to see and the developer agrees to, that would need to be reflected. And that's all that I have for an update for you um, so far as some key topic issues. I know there were several issues discussed at the last meeting, um, but I kind of went through and kind of highlighted the ones that I felt were talked about a little bit more in depth. If you have any questions for me at this time, I'll be happy to answer them. In the LDO current, sorry, do you want to go ahead? Um, in the current LDO, what is the minimum um, street width? Let me, I did not bring my LDO up here. Correct that. I apologize. So four weeks again, I do not have that section memorized. Specifically, the LDO mentions um, for this development um, that construction specifications shall be based on NCDOT traditional neighborhood guidelines. Um, so there are specific smaller street profiles for T&D developments. Um, let's see if that actually Guidelines. I'm not seeing. Yeah. 
the overlay, what would it be? Maybe that's easier to find. Literally refers you to another manual. Not. How many ways be one way or two ways? I was going to ask that same question. I don't know. <laughs> Typically, alleys are two way unless they're. It could really be either because they're private, um, so it could completely be up to the developer whether you want them to sign it for one-way traffic or two-way. Um, I will say that 16 bit of payment, you, you can squeeze um, the foot wide is typically the width of a compact parking place. So nine is standard, industry standard. Um, so 18 kind of standards, you're going down to 16. Um, so I think it would really be up um, to the developer if he wanted it. Two ways. Typically, because the design of them being more narrow, traffic tends to go slower since there are residents that live on those alleys or have driveways that back on. They're typically two way unless the developer signs them. I would say working off of the, the developer's proposal on street widths. For standard subdivision as well as for a TNP subdivision. Uh, it says that the, the result in a proposal, the, the minimum, uh, I'm sorry, that's a lot more time. So, uh, red street width. Uh, I think the street width typically is 26. That's the asphalt width that the gutters. So, it ends up being 30, 31 feet from the outside of curb to outside of curb is our standard size. And alleyways don't necessarily have to have curb and gutter because it's private property, right? That is correct. Um, and a lot of alleyways um, you typically see at 12 feet is what they start at. Um, and I think that was the developer's original proposal was 12 to 16 feet. Um, and then they decided to go with the wider um, profile. Um, and I see here kind of just what Rich said. Um, so I'm looking at 50 feet of right of way for a street with it looks like 28 feet from um, twenty-eight feet with curb and gutter. <coughs> Sorry. So really the streets themselves don't deviate too far from requirements. The right of way on the no parking street. Yeah, so there's no parking on these at the right of way. It's 52 feet and 27 feet of pavement. And the main streets where parking is marked as allowable 65 right away and then 41. Yes. That answers my question. I've got a question. It's between the Civic Creek. So, excuse me, with open space, it's that type of thing. I just, just, I wasn't sure what the difference is. I'm going to guess I actually don't define it. Civic space is, is just what it sounds like. Um, is let me make sure before I say that it's not defined. Um, it typically is not. Um, Envisioning like a building that you would have meeting civic space, that, that was, that's probably not. So, we do have a civic building type, um, which alludes to the definition of. So, civic buildings are used for public purposes, right. just like what you said. Right. Um, <clears throat> these buildings should be designated appropriately to fit within neighborhoods as integral parts of the community. 
their uses include churches, libraries, post offices, and schools. And that's a civic building. So a civic space could have the same um, premise so far as accommodating the, the different uses for public purposes. So, but we also do have a requirement for open space, particularly the urban open space for the TSDs. Would that include like a playground area, civic space? I would count that more toward the, the urban open space requirement. I don't think there's an exact definition. Um, you know, I think that's why I'm talking with the landscape architect today. They wondered because it um, is used for public gathering and the adjacent neighborhoods could come in and use the space. You know, an argument could be made that is for public purpose. It's not just for the neighborhood. It's for the community at large. This is a follow up to do those developments like this typically have a civic building. There certainly are projects that include civic space. I don't know about the scale. Is this considered a small traditional neighborhood development where can't sustain a, a new facility like that versus uh, 1,200 or 2,000 lots that put in a substation for the fire department or the police department or something like that. It could be built on that issue of scale. So civic space is different than an urban space. Urban recreation. Is that what urban is defined as recreation? On the map proposal, it mentions a plot that's square, called public square. Is that what's considered civic space? So we do define urban open space. Um, it's a planned, um, improved, accessible part of the neighborhood used by persons living nearby. Um, it should provide focal points for the neighborhood, a central square or green, for example. Um, there should be a hierarchy of open space within the neighborhoods to serve the residents. Um, so it, it definitely meets the definition of urban open space, and, and there's more here um, that it can include, you know, outdoor furniture, picnic shelters, gazebos, trails, walkways, etc. Um, <clears throat> so it meets that definition. Um, then we don't really have a definition of civic um, space. I think that's why the original project came in with the request for the waiver um, for the two percent because we require a minimum of two percent. Um, I have seen um, in my career, I've seen a small um, library um, satellite office um, in a larger project where I served. It was a 2,000 lot planned community they developed. Um, they set aside space for elementary school again. For 2, so it varies, like Rich said, on the magnitude of the project. And what they're proposing. We require 2%. We don't have a definition of civic space. Tell them, oh, <laughs> Will. Okay. Yeah, so the, the word civic is in our LDO 69 times. I threw 40 of them, and there's no definition. Um, there is a section on page 73 that does mention civic uses, um, but it's more so around what, the, what a civic building would be built on and like what the lighting is and such. Um, there is another portion of the LDO where it does mention um, civic space and parks. So, so the supplemental regulation <clears throat> tucked in with no reference to it. Um, for civic uses in parentheses, it says police and fire stations, libraries, community centers. Um, all civic uses must have a primary access to a minor thoroughfare or higher capacity street. Um, and then just, it talks about outdoor lighting and um, use separation. Again, it doesn't really define it. It kind of gives some examples of separation. Sounds like to me, this would be something that in a large community, like you mentioned, thousand homes, nothing that's small. That's, that's my question to be to the developers. Like, is your 
thought of this civic space and why are we asking to, or why are you guys asking to claim it? We see that public green being the civic space for this particular piece of property. This is a small project, and you know, I've seen these I've traveled to, I've seen churches and so on. But in this space, you have those mixed use buildings that are running this space. You can see the people that are going there to get a cup of coffee, get a cup of coffee, walk across the bar, sit in a bench with that cup of coffee or sandwich or, or whatever it is. Um, so they're building and sit for the um, for the gathering for the whole community. So you know, we see that space for summertime movies. From the restaurant to this kind of thing. So it's it's got parking that surrounds it. So it's a it's a Public space uh, is the fault of what's around it. Uh, to our third meeting, I guess, or second or third coming into this. This wasn't one of the conditions that we were going to get rid of the civic space. What was the all oh, before? But it was in the original. Right, it was in the original, but what was the plan of it being used in the board with the wave. We've always had the same plan for that space. I mean, that, that space is on the highest, driest, flattest portion of the property, so it's going to be a great the square, space. but what was the why now are we asking to... No, it was always, so this is in their original project, it said 0%. It was raised at the last meeting, though, about the issue of civic space, and so we wanted to make sure came back to, to flesh that out a little bit more and, and resolve, the, resolve the issue if we can. Okay. Can I add to what Tony was saying? Mm -hmm. that, that, uh, the community square would be set up such that it has an open air cabana or an hour or that way you can utilize it for parties or whatnot. And we also, you know, from the get-go, approached it with public art. Wasn't it wasn't something that was demanded out of us? That was our vision. So we're we're promoting public art there also. We envision it being open open to the public, but be privately maintained. So to be honest with you, I sort of thought initially we were meeting that uh, goal with the with the with the space. And um, Lori has done a wonderful job. She's you know helping us, but keep in mind we're on our third thing. All of them did wonderful jobs, but you know, it's there's been a lot of transition. Uh -huh. um, I can, while I'm standing up, we made some revisions to some of the conditions, some that you've already spoken of. And so, if I could hand these out uh -huh. um, there, uh, we need to work with them. We wanted to make an attempt to address some of the things the work conditions did and make a change to the uh, stub access. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and these are the ones that she has listed up here is that correct yeah. it's with additional words yeah just to to clarify the, the first two or speak to the access connections or stub streets at cable square and so we're proposing to keep the uh, the old town connection, still maintaining the the barricade and the no construction traffic, all those things. But then down the uh, the Ralston is to make that a pedestrian access only, with a utility connection, so that we can tie in the water and build up the, the water pressure out there. Um, three is, is 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 the same condition that we've had before. Uh, four is the same, five is the same, six is the same, seven is the condition about the parking. That's the condition of the plants that in the family are attached. Uh, 
lots would have that space in between the garage door and the alley or the sidewalk and those off street parking spaces. Can I ask about number five? And um, so just for everyone's information, it says building three on the master plan at the intersection of University Drive and Chalifer Church Road shall be limited to three stories above grade at the street facing University Drive and Chalifer Church Road. Building three west face shall be limited to four stories. So um, the where it's butting up against to Mrs. Hall's property. Um, how is the grade different? So is her home above the grade of this or will it be above the grade of this building or? I think it's right about the same. When you get towards the intersection, the grade starts to fall off down towards that stream that runs through there. Mm -hmm. And that's where it allows you the advantage of, of going under and you're being hollow on the back side of it. So that could be living space or uh, any additional parking to park under the building on that side just because it's so easy to access that lower level. So it won't look as tall from if you're coming up Williamson at the stoplight there at University, you're not going to necessarily see four stories. Right from the from the western direction, you can mm -hmm. see the four stories. I guess that's really considered the front because really the back of the building is up against the roads. No, we would consider the front facing. We would turn our backs towards the street. And the concept is to turn your your front towards the street. So that okay. Back so you're parking. You would park then behind the building, but would you walk around to the front to get? Or would there be a back door entrance? Elevator. If, especially if you come in underneath, there'd be an elevator that comes up to get to all the levels. Okay. And then you'd have sidewalk access to the front. Okay. Ralston Drive, being a pedestrian, all the way down. Does that change anything with the speed humps being put in? Do we need to preserve? Not being put in? So on Ralston, there would not be a street connection with right. that sidewalk on that. And um, what we heard was that uh, the hump was not needed on Old Town. So, uh, and the fire chief asked yeah, that there not be one. Right. Question about the setbacks between the buildings, residential buildings. If I remember correctly, those are the ones that back up to Cable Square property. Is that correct? Give them a little more. Yes. Those larger lots back up to Cable Square and then they are uh, back across the creek. So, so with the with the utility lines, obviously you can't build up to that. What are the distance between your back lot to Cable Square's back lots? It's 160 feet. It's a good hundred some feet on that. Feet. Okay. And will it will there be any like landscaping buffer or I believe there will I be. don't see any up there. I mean, I see the green, but mm -hmm. that's just the utility. Um, just the yeah. Right. So anything that's not colored yellow or anything that's green is open space, basically not in residential okay. lots. So it's not going to be wooded or anything like no, that. It's open. It's open. Yeah. Just a couple of questions. And I do appreciate some of the changes that you propose, I think it's um, going to make this a little more appealing to, to the neighbors as well as to um, to the town. The, the one concern, I guess, is kind of outstanding. Is it's, it's great that we're looking at a sidewalk connect down to Williamson. It seems like there's still a little confusion about you know what side of the road that should be on or can be on because there's got to be right of ways that would have to be acquired. Um, so that, that's a great proposal for out there, but it may not happen depending on access or what the DOT does. So I, I guess that's the kind of thing that may not happen for some time. Right, Rich? Extension from, from where they're proposing it <coughs> could be problematic, you're right. Yeah. It would require either, um, if you stayed on the, on the west side of the road, either 
through the woods to connect to existing sidewalks within the Star Center parking lot or continuing along the road where you have to deal with a ditch and an elevated parking lot supporting, you know, or retaining walls, that kind of thing, because that sidewalk is elevated across Char Center. When you pass Char Center, there's another section where there is no sidewalk uh, along the homes uh, around Acadia. So future extensions of that, of the sidewalk on the westerly side would be fairly expensive sidewalks to construct um, uh, with some engineering issues to deal with. There's also the question of where it's proposed to stop and then a mid-block crossing to the, to the university side. I think that's Zach Wilson Drive that it's connecting to. It's a driveway into some, some uh, parking area. The concern that has been expressed to me by DOT, which presumably would come as part of their review, is that having an additional mid-block, they don't like mid-block crossings to begin with. I mean, another one on that stretch of road, they have some significant concerns about it. Um, there's, I think there's already three in and around Char Center. What, what, what I've talked to the developer about, I have a meeting scheduled with the university later this week to talk about is whether it, there's the potential for the university providing an easement to put a sidewalk on the easterly side outside the right of way, which makes it an easier sidewalk to build rather than to de deal with DOT urban sidewalk design standards. Um, and, and even if that only comes down as far as Zach Wilson Drive, it's within the town's ability if the, if or to, to consider an expense to extend well, that to the inside side of the university drive over Williamson at the intersection of university and Williamson. That would be DOT's preference. Yeah, and that would be most logical. From the project across university, right. across Williamson, and then come down on the east side. Right. Without getting too far in the weeds, I just that's something yeah. that's going to have to be worked out. And I think the developer understands he, he doesn't want to spend any more money than he needs to, obviously. And this is something that the, the DOTs are proposed to do anyway, right? They approved that project, which the sidewalk, what you say? Well, there is none right now. Well, there is one, not they yet. haven't approved anything yet. Well, it was on, it was only we submitted the, that. It, when it was approved and it was rescored, now is it going to be taken off? I don't know. Okay, I know it's on our pedestrian plan. Yeah, I haven't seen. I didn't notice the detail that said it was on one side yeah, or the yeah, other. Here, that was one of the things she was kind of surprised. It was approved, and then it was hit. And a lot of these projects got kicked down the road. Yeah. So I mean, they've they've approved. I don't know if they approved funding for it. Or not. I'd have to go back and. Yeah. Uh, a little yeah. bit. I, I like to go back and revisit that. But yeah. I, I mentioned that because that's kind of a. That's a big expense, that's a tremendous expense to bring a sidewalk, as we know. Um, why not use money wisely for balance purposes as well as the developer? Can I say something? Sure. Um, so, that sidewalk extension, uh, leaving the intersection is like 900 feet. I volunteered to do that because I've got an understanding with the property owner. So, I can make that commitment. I can say I can bring you a sidewalk on her feet down the western side of the property, west, western side of Williamson Street. I have no control over Elon or the college. I have no control yeah. over what they will allow me to do or not allow me to do. So that's where my comfort level ends. Because I want to be able to control my own destiny. I want to be able to make a commitment yeah. to you folks that I can deliver on. I don't know what Elon will allow me to do when they will allow me to do it. I do know that I can do that sidewalk on the western side of the road. So that's why why we got here or how sure. we got here. Yeah. I just want everybody to understand it is a significant investment. Yeah. And we're volunteering to do it. And, and I guess my only comment on the, the issue that, that I've raised with that condition is that it is a specific condition for specific location subject to DOT review. 
even if that language were, were vaguer to allow these ongoing discussions, and we can secure the ability of the developer to build on the easterly side, even if it's just the same distance as that they're proposing to do on the westerly side, uh, from a long range standpoint, I'm trying to think what benefits the town better um, in that I think we have an easier way of connecting sidewalks on the easterly side than on the westerly side, that's all. Um, if we can't work it out on the, west, on the easterly side, you know, then maybe the westerly side would have to be the, be the option. Um, right now, the, the condition as worded doesn't allow for any options. That, that, I guess that's my only concern. If we could, you know, if, if the developer were willing to look at that language to allow for an option on either side, depending on how discussions go, and leave that to the, the design phase of the actual location, that, that could be a workable solution from my point of view. And, and I agree. I think it's not an either or. I think we need to look at what's the best solution. In safety, as you mentioned, having an additional crosswalk in the middle of Williamson is something that I don't think any of us really want to uh, promote. I think it, it, an intersection that exists today probably makes more sense. So I, I don't want any condition to be such that, well, it's either on the west side or it's not going to be done at all. I think it's what we have to sort of work out. So is that something that you would like for Lori to work with Jeremy and his team? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, now I, think next we, I think we'd like to see a sidewalk, but let's do it so it's in the best interest of the whole town, not create another safety hazard. If we put a crossing midstream in the shore center, whereas we know there's, there's a driveway, there's some people pulling in and out for events, for ball games, um, if you're closer to the intersection, I think you remove some of that because there is a cross section right there in front of Shard that crosses over the road. Right. When they have a, when they have events, they frequently have somebody there monitoring them. Right. So it's it's not just a free for all. They don't do events. So. So I one question I do have on that though, Monty is is to you is. So are you saying that, because you don't want it to be like an ultimatum, but it's kind of like you're saying. Well, so I mean, obviously give and take, what they're doing is giving us an opportunity for them to spend money to build something mm -hmm. to help the town. Mm -hmm. And my point is, is that really gonna help the town or is that just gonna suffice because it's easier from his perspective because he knows the landowner and they have an agreement to, to, that would allow him to do that. Right. Well, would what we turn doing, down a free sidewalk if Elon if, University if isn't willing to play? Well, I mean, I think that's what we have to talk about is it? we want to create another unsafe condition. I mean, people cross major highways. Right. Williamson but, is not one got, of those. In that section there, you've already got two crosswalks right, crosswalks right there now. If you put another one on the other side of that driveway, those are three right there and together. And as we see downtown, how people and speed through those. Mm -hmm. So if you've got pedestrian it, on both sides, people trying to cross right there, it's, it's problematic. I mean, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but this is significantly farther down the road than the next one. I mean, if you look, so I'm looking at the map and right now. I, I know the short, if I could. One. It's also subject to DOT's approval. Right. Right. So it's not even a question of whether we think it's safe or what we would like. Ultimately, they're going to make that decision as whether they're going to allow another one of these or they don't like to allow them anyway. Amid, well, how did Elon University get them approved? BMT, before my time. I don't know. Um, were they approved or were they just painted on the road? I, I, I'm assuming they were approved um, because I mean the infrastructure would have had to been approved by DOT sidewalk designs. Um, how? Why? I can't tell you. All I can tell you is I've talked to the, the district engineer. And they would prefer not to see another one. Um, they would prefer to see the, the crosswalk at Williamson or uh, up at University of Williamson. 
I guess, and my only point is, I don't know that we need to figure it out where it's going to go tonight. Mm -hmm. We may not know until DOT is done with their review and they're not there yet. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, we, if the condition were such that it had flexibility built into it, so it could go where DOT is going to allow it to go, where we have access to, to the property to build it, where there's sufficient funding, that they may end up right where they want to be. <laughs> no other options are possible. But there are other options that are better for the community that don't cost them additional funding. That might be a benefit to be able to be able to do that. The condition as a word today doesn't allow for that. That's all. So Jeremy, is that something you can work with Lori on to at least discuss? Is there some flexibility? Like, obviously, you know that you can do this if NCDOT approves it, but to put in the condition, what if NCDOT doesn't approve it? What if Elon University says you can build it on their side? Is there space for flexibility there? I don't know. We'd have to look at it again. I don't know what Elon is going to require out of me. Are they going to require me to pay for their easement? Are they, how cost prohibitive is that going to be? Right. Is the town going to take on the easement procurement? Is there irrigation there? I'm going to tear up all the sod. I'm going to have to sod. When am I going to replace the sod? I mean, it just, it's not as easy as just saying I'm putting down 500 feet of sidewalk. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of Dealing with grades, there will be pipe, there could be storm former crossings in that location. Am I right with that, Chad? So there's a lot of variables. <clears throat> we took what we thought was the appropriate route, and given our experience and Jeff's historical experience with DOT, we thought we proposed what was the most logical. Matt, we will look at it, and I, I, I don't know. I mean, you're, it's. Um, you've asked me something very ambiguous because there's just too many variables. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you and Jeremy and his team can just take a look at that to see what flexibility might be in that particular one, we certainly would love to see a sidewalk because I have sidewalks on their side. If they're not going to connect to downtown, that's something that has continuously been asked of us. Um, so if we can just see what be in there and yeah. other questions? I do appreciate you guys working uh, with us through this process and listening uh, to residents and listening uh, to the councils and you know, we are we are crafting uh, something together, um, and it shows that she's community by your willingness to, to have these conversations. So I do appreciate it. You know, it does feel weird, you know, you're offering not under foot a sidewalk, and then we're just gonna be like, nah, you know. Um, so, so I understand um, where you're sitting with that, but I do appreciate some of these new uh, conditions that you, you put in um, moving forward. It doesn't go unnoticed. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, one thing that I spoke to um, a resident about, and this is, you know, not really part of the conditional zoning, but it was a question that came up, is about the windows in the homes that are only six feet apart. Are they going to be able to look out one bedroom into the other person's bedroom, or will they be offset so that that doesn't occur? I mean, obviously, you're not the builder, but... Typically, what happens is they're either offset, or if they are parallel to each other, they would do the uh, frosted glass or the oval glass. And that. Okay. It lets natural light in. Okay. Um, would the apartment complex be upheld to the same rules as the HOA in the single housing portion? It would. It would be managed by the uh, by the same HOA and would be a sub association of the master association. So it would be the same governing entity that we would manage, um, at least initially, if not 
long term, and um, so they would have uh, they would have some different regulations being a sub association, but they would fall under the master. And I know that you can't say this for sure, but in the typical neighborhood, what would you anticipate an HOA fee being in this type of neighborhood? Uh, it's, it's, it would vary on the product, but typically most of these communities either have a $500 or $1,000 capital contribution initially, and then probably somewhere between um, $75 and $95 a month for the townhomes. The single family would be a little bit different, a little bit cheaper. Great. Fresh memory. You've said it before, but just to kind of reiterate the, the price range, estimated price range. I know that's a moving target, yeah, clearly. Is, especially today. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand. But uh, I guess, you know, one of the things we talked about is the affordability uh, of, you know, the home to uh, given another option to both uh, mention uh, kind of a, a range there. Yeah. You know, and I understand I'm not holding you yeah. to anything because yeah. I understand. It's not a zoning committee, but the division here would be the, the townhomes would probably trade in the 280s, and then the single family would go up all the way into the fives. So, you know, you've got multiple product types. You've got, you know, a 22 foot town, you've got uh, two smaller alley driven single families, and then you've got the front loaded. So, you've got a lot of diversity of mix, a lot of diversity of product should complement each other very well. And so you've got those price bands that are more appealing to most, not to everybody, but, you know. Other questions for Lori, the development team? No, I mean, I like the, I like the counter proposals that you presented here. Um, I think the more be closer to get, like Quinn said, to, to something that you can live with, obviously, and you can be profitable, but also the citizens who are showing up here tonight can say, well, yeah, that's not going to take away from my quality of life or from my property value. Um, let's, let's face it, if you're going to sell homes for $500,000, um, that's not going to drop the property values on their properties. I mean, it's just a given. So I, I think that's a plus. Um, I, I like the fact that we've resolved some of the connectivities um, by using the old town as opposed to Ralston. I, I think that's going to benefit both neighborhoods. It gives them an access to University Drive um, if they're going to the, to the west. So I think that's something that many of those residents will use. Um, I appreciate the fact that we've defined what the setbacks are for the garage being a minimum of 18 foot. Uh, we can go around town now today and see um, examples where we allow the town from our ordinances uh, 10 feet of space from the sidewalk to the garage. And your neighbors, you can see it, can't park a car in the driveway without parking it over the sidewalk, which defeats the purpose of having sidewalks or making neighborhoods that are connective and friendly. So I appreciate that. So those are things that I think are really important. Well, in addition to getting the, um, the okay from our fire chief about, you know, have we having the, the recent fire, just the concern with that and, and how that's been addressed and, and making sure everything's to code and, uh, and then getting in and out of there being fine. So I agree with uh, both of them. I think y'all done a really good job in, in working with us and we appreciate that. Anything else from you, Quinn? I mean, again, I appreciate the sidewalk, right? I mean, that's that's something that we would love to have. Um, and I do uh, hope that you can work with our staff and our staff can work with you guys to try to figure out some language where it's not half, where it has to be set on the Western side. Um, because, you know, I, I, I do think it's smart connectivity um, that we as a town are looking for. And I think it will benefit the new residents of this development, you know, if it's smart connectivity. Um, so as long as it's not something set in stone where we can just have some dialogue and figure that out, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you guys. I mean, you've been coming the past three weeks now, so we appreciate it. Okay. 
Um, I would like for the board to entertain not taking a vote this evening, just out of respect for our two members who are not here this evening. I believe do we need a motion. Um, well, you had at the previous or meeting. Or just delay until our next. Okay. Continuation of discussion until the next meeting. Yes. Is that what we? Yeah. Um, would, did you have a resolution on the question of civic? I don't think it's well defined in our LDO, and that needs to be well defined in our LMO. It's going to be. I also think that our LMO needs to address the length of driveways in whatever way that it can, so that it is clear to developers that when they come, that that really needs to be part of the development process because it is an issue. Um, I think in the Pearson neighborhood, it even happens in my neighborhood or around my neighborhood where there is a sidewalk that cars are often blocking it. It is against our ordinances. Um, at least I think it is. I know we voted on that at some point. I can't find it in our code of ordinances, but it is something that I do think that we, we need to make sure that we're enforcing. If we're not going to enforce it, then it shouldn't be an ordinance. Do I have a motion to continue this discussion to our next meeting? I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you all so much. The Tuesday night. The ninth. Yes. It is the second Tuesday in August. We will not meet. Moving on to new business, letter A, downtown advisory board appointments. I believe Jill is giving us presentations. Two presentations. Oh yeah, if you all would like to leave, anybody is welcome to stay, but you're welcome to leave as well. I know a lot of you have been here several meetings in a row, so thank you. <laughs> you ran them all off. Should we stay in the door? Should we get the doors? All right. <laughs> Madam Mayor, have you been called that yet? Yes. Madam Mayor and <laughs> Council. I am here tonight to uh, present two items. One, this one is um, adding some people to our downtown advisory board, which I'm excited about. Um, as you all know, at this stage of the game, these are uh, town council appointed positions until we become the 501c3, then, then we will point one from within but um, one of the things I wanted to do to attract more board members was formalize it a little bit so I've come with up with an application and a job description because I feel like nobody should really have to apply for something they have no idea what they're in for right so and in that process our, our uh, downtown advisory board um, spent some time uh, really thinking about how to balance the board out how to have um, some diversity in our board. And uh, so we discussed that at length and, and different people came forward with application applicant ideas. So when I sent them out, I had two very quick responses from these two, which I was very happy about. So if you've had a chance to review the application, the two uh, positions we have are for Kimberly Holt, who's the owner of Pandora's Pies, and Mackenzie Brown, she's a family uh, property downtown owner. A lot of you know her father, Joel Brown. So when, when they applied for these positions, you know, we, we discussed it at length. We had made recommendations that we actually have somebody in, endorse them. And we really discussed that these two would be a great addition to our downtown advisory board. Um, they would serve a three-year term, and then they have uh, up to two terms they can serve for before they have to cycle off. So um, it's my request that you approve the two applicants uh, that we submitted from the downtown advisory board. Are we taking a vote this evening on these items or are we pushing these to our, work, or our actual meeting? Do you, 
So I had a question. Obviously, how many how many how many slots are you trying to, to fill? Yeah, because yes. you had two that submitted. Right. So we actually there are seven seats, and we currently have three that are filled. So I think during COVID things kind of tapered off. I don't know the whole story behind. Uh, when people cycled off and then of course we had a staff changeover so we're in the rebuild process is partly why i wanted to do i thought well you know the job description to kind of um help that and like i said we uh we, we have four positions open right now right now we have two applicants and we have a few other in the wings we've been discussing so well and i'm a, I'm a member of that uh downtown advisory board and one of the things we've been missing missing a little bit since covid or been owners downtown you know right. and we really need that representation mm -hmm. and both of these folks fit that bill so that's great and we're still looking how are you um what about that just post it on the on websites well, it's been more of a personal yeah, i yeah. i asked each board member um, they yeah. had a little assignment to come back with a name or two mm -hmm. of um of people that i think would be good for the board i think right now we're looking for kind of just a general overall, and we actually put you on the spot. We talked that you might be a great, great person to, to find uh, just kind of your average citizen, maybe a stay at home mom or somebody that's just maybe isn't involved in, in the town of Elon, but would be a great support to our board. Um, we, we did want to have some females. We, are, we were had all, all males at this point um, and uh, just some, you know, bring some energy and a different vision. I think you always need business owners. That's pretty key. But they're just just members of the community that care about the community. Is it advertised on our website though that we have yes. vacant seats yeah. open? And so I take it you're looking really for stakeholders, people that either who are residents or business owners. Yes. Okay. At minimum, a resident. Yeah. yeah. And, or at least you know work in the town, have some sort of yeah. connection. I mean, I'm I'm comfortable taking a vote to accept these two nominees tonight if. Um, maybe your step you would have an objection to, to doing that because I think the sooner that we can get them approved, if that's what we do, then the better all the committee is going to be to get hit the road running. Okay. Would you like to make a motion? I make the motion we accept the two nominations as submitted from Ms. Uh, Ms. Brown and uh, Ms. Holt. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. It's much easier to hear the yeas and nays. There's <laughs> only three of them. <laughs> All right. Um, next on the agenda is the downtown master plan. And you did provide us with a memo of the details, but if you could just um, give us a brief presentation of that as well. Right. You have the original agenda item, and I'll start with that and then move on to the attachment that you um, have got tonight. Um, I'm very excited that we are uh, ready to move forward with a master plan for downtown. A couple of your council members have been on that group. Uh, we did have it budgeted in 2021, and we're hearing those, we'll be hearing those funds or allocating those from that budget year into the 2023 budget. Um, there's a lot of changes that have happened in downtown since 2014. We had a lot of discussion on that. And actually a lot of the written items have been completed from that, that master plan. Um, one of the things that we have, the big project that's coming up is, is redoing this plaza on West College. And we talked about to the different applicants um, that we really wanted to complement that plaza. And in addition to the social district that's coming up and, and the, also the streetscape project. So there's a, there's a lot of things happening in downtown that weren't there you know, 10 years ago. Um, in addition, the LMO committee is looking to expand the downtown footprint. So it seems like an apropos time to, uh, to go forth and do a new master plan for our downtown. So uh, we had proposals in the fall and then there was a staff changeover. So we kind of put that on hold until I got here and then we go right in. And luckily we were able to get the whole group together in July, which was no easy task. Thank you for those that came two nights in a row to interview people. And we selected three firms to interview out of five, and they were land design, benchmark, and regeneration by design. If you go to that attachment and the memo that we um, gave you tonight, uh, we had selected and we all kind of agreed and discussed this at length for about 30 minutes who we wanted to pick. So it was not an easy decision. 
but we um, recommended that benchmark be our choice for our downtown master plan. If you look at your packet, um, there is a, actually the contract for services that's included. It's $73,450. We had $39,000 in last year's budget that will flow to the fund balance so we can carry that over in addition to $50,000 in the current budget, which gave us $89,000. I did my math correct. Uh, we are recommending that council authorize the town manager to negotiate a contract with Benchmark, and we are further recommending that the council entertain a budget amendment at its next meeting, August 9th, to reappropriate the 23450 from the previous year. Now, when we were doing these interviews, it, it, we act, actually asked each of these um, organizations if they would be willing to consider including the streetscape project with the master plan. It just kind of made sense for us to bring that up and see if they would be interested in that as well. So uh, we are recommending that that you they you consider that as well. And Rich had a discussion with our, our attorney today um, to make sure that there was no issues with us combining that project into two. And there doesn't appear to be any kind of conflict with that. And there's no straight state, uh, state statute. That's a hard. That's almost like you know. So speed bills by the seashore, right? So we are requesting that the committee um, consider adding the streetscape project onto the downtown master plan. And we would bring a, a contract addendum to you with that because we don't have all the specifics on that at this time. So two motions have been prepared. And so we're recommending that the mayor and town council approve the recommendations from the review committee to award the downtown master plan project to benchmark and to authorize the town manager to negotiate the final contract and sign on behalf of the town. And then further to authorize the town manager to negotiate the contract then for the streetscape design work and then we'll bring that back to you for a future vote. So if you turn to the next page, uh, Madam Mayor, you've got two motions there to consider. If you'll recall, we had, we had planned on budgeting the master plan over two fiscal years. Right. Unfortunately, at the end of the pre last fiscal year, we did not, we were anticipating already having signed the contract, mm -hmm. which point that money would have been obligated. We hadn't, so the money has gone into fund balance, which would require the uh, budget amendment to take it out of fund balance and apply it to this project, along with the money we appropriated for this project mm -hmm. in the current fiscal year. If you recall, we had advertised the master plan last fall. So it was anticipated at that point that we would be starting. And as we were going through the budget process, we, we made a, a determination to utilize existing fund balance for some capital projects, including the North Wasteman street, Streetscape project. So that kind of got added to the budget during the budget process. And as Jill said, while we were talking about the folks, it occurred to us that it made more sense to do them together than to do them separately. Similar feel of the consultants. You don't have two different teams running around downtown trying to get people to talk about things and having that confusion. Uh, so that's where that came from. Uh, our, our purchasing policies uh, allow actually don't require you to approve those kind of contracts anyway, up to uh, up, I think it's up to five hundred thousand dollars. Like as I told someone, which seems absurd to me. I'll always take it to you. Uh, state statute, because this is not a an engineering project or a construction project, state statute is it, statute is is kind of silent on it as well. Uh, the second motion does address any potential issues with the Mini Brooks Act. We're not. There may be some engineering work done. It's going to be a small amount of money. Uh, so it would be exempt. And if we're not exempt, it's under the thresholds of Mini Brooks anyway. So that I just want to explain that second motion to you particularly because it's it's wording you haven't seen before in motion. I mean, I would like to request maybe that Quinn and, and Mark maybe share a little bit of our um, how we reached our, our verdict, so to speak, to uh, 
Yeah, so we, uh, like Jill said, uh, we had five firms come and Jill was great facilitating and keeping the, this committee on track. Uh, and our, our first meeting was getting all together. We, we all uh, got the proposals from all the firms and got together and we ranked them one, two, three. Um, and then whatever the top three were, um, I chose one that nobody else chose. Um, so <laughs> we didn't get the interview. Um, but we interviewed, uh, from there, we interviewed three. And uh, she also asked that we all, the committee, put questions together. So we sent a list of questions and they compiled, a, a, I guess, a cheat sheet for us uh, during this uh, interview process where we had roughly 10 to 12 questions. Um, and most of the people during the presentations hit on these questions already without us having to ask. Um, but then we just asked them a lot of questions. I think we had a good group of people. Um, you know, Mark and I were on there. Um, so from my experience of just being downtown, uh, from Mark's experience of being on the board for 16 years, uh, we had Dr. Jeff Stein on it. And then, of course, our staff members, uh, Lori, uh, Rich, and uh, Jill. And so I think we were able to get some good, hard questions out of them. Um, we got to uh, see how they would respond to some of these questions, putting on the spot. And I think we came up with a good choice. Um, I'm happy with them. I felt uh, like some of their language that they used and they're excited. And this is because I feel for this master plan, we need to make sure it was, what are we really asking? What do we need from this? Um, what's the most important thing? And I think it's messaging, right? We need to get the stakeholders to buy into and get excited about something coming to uh, our town and having our downtown is everybody in Elon's downtown, um, making sure that it's not the university's downtown. Um, and I think this firm can do that. I think this firm uh, is gonna be able to uh, help us look at grabbing people to get engaged in these public uh, workshops, because that's what we need, right? We can't just do it ourselves. And, that was the most important thing for me, was making sure that these people, uh, whoever we picked, right, rally the troops of the, the neighbors. And I think they they do it pretty well, um, or can, right? You know, I, from what I got from them, I was excited. I was ready to go put stickers on boards and get excited about what my plan was or you know, how, how to give them thoughts and ideas. So uh, I hope it transitions to uh, the public. Yeah, I agree. That was well said. I mean, we, I think we spent a lot of good time and listened and, and many of the questions that we had prepared really, we didn't even go by necessarily. We kind of asked questions based upon their presentation. I, I think one of the big things, and I was involved in the initial master plan, which didn't go too well <laughs> in 2014, we, we kind of learned a lot of lessons from that, quite frankly, and we've been transparent with some of the things that went wrong with that. Uh, I think, as Quinn said, I think this, this firm will do a very good job. Um, you know, what we don't want is a sit on the shelf plan. Uh, want something that's going to be able to be used and I think the the, uh, the project downtown that we've started um, is is a great that that gathering space is a really good jumping off part point to let the this kind of grow from there um, so uh, like Ken said I'm really pleased I mean of course uh, I did want to mention um, that Lori had worked with both uh, Benchmark and Land Design, uh, two of the firms of the three that we pick, and that was very comforting to me that she'd had very positive experiences yeah. with both exactly. of those organizations. But once we had our deliberations, like I said, it was about 30 minutes we were in a powwow here, um, we all really came to the conclusion that this was our pick. So. I think it's a good time, right, you know, for us to, to be doing this, uh, to echo with Mark at the plaza. You know, it's for us as a town, you know, we, we ask for private development and to help move it forward. Um, so with us putting our money where our mouth is and investing into our downtown, I think it's a good launching pad for us to get this, these private investors to, to come in and see that this town, we're, as a town, we're moving into creating a downtown master plan that is going to be beneficial for all.
Madam Mayor. Could, could I just ask a question? I think that our town attorney said that we weren't supposed to take questions until after the meeting. Is that correct? Um, it's not, I mean, it's not a public hearing, certainly. Um, That's so, okay. yeah, I, I mean, we can certainly answer your questions afterwards. Tom. I want to answer uh, a question. You, are you going to vote on this tonight? I don't know that we've made that decision yet. All right. Well, if you decide to, I renew my request for question. So you have two uh, motions before you, if you're, if you're ready to move forward. The voting tonight is completely up to you. Now, the question I would have is, not that I think it's a conflict, but and I certainly appreciate Mark and Gwen's participation on this. If we vote for it tonight, there's just two people who made the ultimate decision mm -hmm. and myself having to decide. Me personally, I, I, I prefer to have um, the other council attending to participate in this vote. I think we'd probably come to the same conclusion, but I think at the end of the day, I think I would prefer to to our next meeting. I think that's a I think that's a fair statement. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Okay. So would you like to make a motion to continue? Um, I can make a motion we continue that until our next meeting. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Moving on to our reports, town manager couple items. Uh, we've gotten our stormwater audit back from the EU. They are the ongoing presentation of, of stormwater plans, stormwater implementations, stormwater audits, stormwater plans, new stormwater implementations. Um, they've identified some minor issues with ours, some language choices that we had in our, in our plan and other documents that they've asked us to address. Um, and it's time for us to rewrite our stormwater plan. So those, those issues will all be addressed in our upcoming stormwater plan. Uh, it will then secure our, our stormwater recertification. Next Friday, August 5th, that is our next movie on the lawn evening uh, out of Bestrament Park. Uh, this, the movie of the night is Sing Fu. And this show starts at about 8.30. Uh, as always, it has free popcorn and free drinks. Uh, we've had some issues with the audio system in this room over the last couple of meetings. People have not been able to hear us. Uh, Diane got, has been on the phone with uh, Camcor, who's done the installation in the past, and they were, I think she got them here last week, and um, they made some improvements, which which seemed to have really addressed the issue. I think we, we were having a people being able to hear us online. How old is our system? Because we just have two years. <laughs> Um, and last two items, tomorrow morning, we are swearing in our newest police, off, police officer, Edgar Ocampo. We've all got the notice that's at nine. Um, and uh, Chief Blackwater will have Officer Ocampo here at our next meeting to introduce him to everybody in case you can't make the uh, swearing in. And uh, we also received a letter of resignation today from Lieutenant Mann in the fire department. Uh, he's been with us since 2017. And he's indicated he is uh, going to go work with in his family's business. So we're sorry to lose him. He's been a great officer. We hired him as an engineer, and he's moved his way up to lieutenant in those couple of years he's been with us. So that's all I've got. All right. Get on to the board, Monty. Yeah, I, I want to thank um, citizens who showed up tonight and participated in what we do, and I think it's always important. Um, and we need actually in town on last Thursday with, uh, and Mayor Sharp hosted our Alamance community municipality uh, leaders and it was a good chance to meet. I guess you hadn't met in three years, right? So that was a good opportunity for us to meet some folks that we read about maybe in, in Alamance News, but we don't get a chance to see. And that was good. Um, and I appreciate the work that Mark and Quinn, I made a comment to Mark earlier about uh, I think he won full-time staff last week. I saw his vehicle mm -hmm. pretty nice last night, last <laughs> week, and, uh, and I appreciate the time you and uh, the rest of the staff put into uh, to preparing and to doing the work of the town. Thank you. Okay. Um, so 
I guess a little update from the art uh, committee. Um, Jill, uh, since coming in, has been diligently working and, and hearing our cries of wanting to bring art in. Um, so, you know, she was able to secure us get a sculpture thing um, from Alamance Arts. But we also are moving forward with um, our crosswalk. So we're going to have a crosswalk painted um, right beside McGurk's going across Holt. Uh, it's going to be a, a nice mural on the ground. Um, she secured an artist to come do that. And I think we're going to have that before the students come back, hopefully. Um, and, and then the dining area on Lebanon, uh, looking to put a mural underneath that uh, on the ground. Um, so, you know, we're, we're making our downtown creative, welcoming and bright. And it's something, you know, since being downtown since 2011, it's something I've been really looking forward to. And I think a lot of the merchants during the merchant committees have been wanting this. So, you know, that's a nice fun update for, for us to have. Now, if you haven't seen scene two, it's awesome. Like it really is an awesome, cute movie. Um, my daughter love, loves it. So um, we'll see what we can do about making it out there. And, and I enjoyed working on this uh, you know, interview committee. It was, it was a nice uh, process uh, to go through and you know, everyone was prepared. And um, I'm excited uh, for Stephanie and uh, Randy to hear their thoughts from the packet that we got about these people and, and how they want to move forward with it. Yeah, Mark. Uh, just thanks to the staff. I know we always say that, but it's true, particularly lately. There's been a lot on your plate, and y'all are newbies too. So thank you very much uh, for all you've done for the question. A lot of questions we've had with subdivision, Jill, with the, all the downtown stuff. So I think we're heading in the right direction here. So uh, thank you all very much. That's all. Absolutely. Thank you all um, very much. One thing that I didn't mark in my notes and I had forgotten to address was when we did have a lot of people in the room, um, there were a lot of issues with the ability to hear. If there is somewhere in the budget to accommodate a microphone at our podium, I think that that would be very beneficial um, because I'm sure that not only when you have a room full of people, but you know, if there's other people talking in the audience, even for us to hear a presenter is sometimes difficult. Um, that might also help with, you know, if we're going to continue to live stream everything, you know, the ability for that to be better heard as well. For you folks or for the podium? For the podium. I feel like I'm loud enough so, without the microphone. I'm on me. Are you agreeing with yeah. that, Diane? <laughs> she did that fast, too. She was like, yes. <laughs> okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second in there. All in favor, say aye. Aye. <coughs> on the ninth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>